Hello and welcome to Dice Tower. I'm Wendy Yee. And I'm Chris Yee. And today we're going to be reviewing the expansion for Pirates of Maracaibo Commanders. That's right. This is, uh, so same three designers as the original game. Mm -hmm. This is going to introduce modular board, player powers, and a few extra little cards and stuff here and there. Wendy's going to go ahead, show us off uh, what's in this box, and we'll talk about it. These are the pieces in the Pirates of Maracaibo Commander's Expansion. Um, as you can see, we have a new exploration board over here. Now this is actually um, dual sided. So there's a variety of different options. You can randomly place together the different sides and create new unique um, exploration boards over here. Um, there's also new player powers, which I'll talk about in a little bit. There's this introduction of rum and cannons. We have some new figurehead tokens that will also show some cannons and some rum and use some of these other expansion elements. You also get some level one cards that are included as well as a ton of level two cards. And then some of the player powers have additional little black market things that they can use as well. So let's talk about this new expansion board over here. The ending is a little bit different. And as you can see with it being dual sided, this ending over here allows for cannons to be added Whereas this one over here, you don't get the cannons until actually reaching this spot, um, the Maracaibo spot over here. There's also ways that you can move and gain the same location. So you could actually have your pawn on a location and you could choose to move two spaces and gain that bonus twice, or you could gain the bonus where you started, move two spaces and then gain the bonus where you end as well. Um, so that's kind of new and different and then allowing you to get cities. And then it also introduces this idea of forts. Now in a two player game, you have forts just on the board and then occasionally here on the map, whenever you see a fort symbol like this over here, and these are things that you can use cannons to fight. Now, cannons go on your upgrade ship board uh, just like the cubes do, but instead they replace a cube. So if you look at this side over here, this shows that you gain an upgrade cube, and then you can turn one of your upgrade cubes into a cannon. So that's what that symbol means right there. Um, they still count as an upgrade for all intents and purposes, but now it actually is a cannon value. Cannon values are a new fighting value that's different than the swashbuckling of the swords that we often see like this. Um, but instead, when something requires cannons, um, the forts require just that different type of symbol. So here I would need a 13 cannon. Um, I would roll the dice just like I would normally. I would pick one of the dice and then I would add whatever my cannon value is to that. And hopefully if I reach 13, then I can gain 17 victory points, collect this, and it will actually do a little bit more over here on our player abilities. You can also bribe them with money or with rum. And so if you can't quite reach your cannon value, but you have extra rum sitting around um, and extra money, you can actually uh, make this more possible to get. So how do you get rum in this game? Well, rum, we have these additional little boards over here. These go on the two island cards that do not have um, the, the different treasure squares on them. So these will add to that. And when you go to the rum market, you go to a card that has a rum market, you will either gain a rum or you can then spend that rum on one of your player tiles over here. So rum has a couple different uses. Let's talk about these little player tiles. So we have individual player powers and that's whatever the top banner is up here. And then we have these little banners at the bottom. The bottom right is usually an end game banner and then the bottom left is some sort of bonus during the game. And when you have a rum that is currently on your, your board, you can then go to the rum market and you can choose to spend it onto one of these cards. When you do so, that activates whatever banner it's pointing to. If you ever complete both sides, then you get the benefit in the middle as well. So this would be to activate all of my victory point incomes. In addition to that, we also have some new figureheads. This gives you cannons and then also your income is based on how many cannons that you have. Um, this allows you to fight the forts with a one discount. Um, I'm sorry, your, your swashbuckling level is the discount for forts. So whatever your permanent swords are, you can use those when you're fighting. Um, this allows you to spend rum to make your forts easier to bribe, or basically you get more power against your bribing. And this over here means your goals um, are worth rum and money as well. 
So one last thing I actually forgot to mention is that the player powers are double sided. So at the beginning of the game, you get two of them. You choose which one you want face up for the power and then the other one you flip over. And this is even more of places for you to place rum to gain abilities, uh, these little banner abilities. But also this is where the forts come in. So as you um, defeat these forts, they actually come over depending on which color of die you use to defeat the fort will determine where it goes on your board. And that is another way that you can unlock these banners over here. And once again, if you unlock the outside banners, then you can gain the benefit in the middle. If you unlock everything, you can gain extra points. So um, this is just another little mini game that we'll talk about in our review. So speaking of reviews, let's get back to the studio and talk about what we think. All right, so as you can see, there's a lot of little things in here. One thing that I want to talk about a little bit is the player powers and that mini game concept of the, the dual-sided board that you have. I like anything like that that says, like, here's two things, pick a front and a back. It's kind of the fun of, like, Gloomhaven every single turn, right? You pick, but, but you know, it's, and you can make any two of the combos work. The player powers are pretty dang strong. I think that those feel are going to feel clearly more different than like the backsides, the little like yeah. do these four things. But that's not bad. That I mean, they still made the backsides of all of them actually very like different from each other. They are. Some you get quests, some you get fighting abilities, some you get the the cannon abilities, some you get yeah, there's just a lot of different stuff going on. It almost feels it's like fun. a thing they didn't have to do to make the backsides all different. They could have been like, "Yeah, green fort gives you 5 bucks. You know, white fort gives you whatever thing, right?" Uh, and just like, oh, we're giving you a different player power. No, 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 both sides are different, and I think that that was cool. They kind of, it kind of feels like a went the extra mile on it. Right, right. It's just part of the the choice process. I think it makes the choice more interesting because it's not just, hey, what power do I want? It's what power do I want, and does it work with the back of this board, or does this power work better with this back of the board? I think it's a good decision. I'm really surprised at how strong the powers are, and I didn't really go into them, um, but because there's a ton of them. But one of the ones that I played with that was really interesting was that for all those quest cards that you get, I just had to meet the top objective, not the bottom objective, to, real, to be able to receive all the points on the bottom. And so I could do a ton of objectives, like just the easy version of them, which was just, it was interesting. Oh, that's got to be fun because it's easier to cross two rivers than three rivers. It's easier yeah. to get two buried emeralds than like four of them or whatever, you know, those, right. those different thresholds. There's also some unique um, spots on the new map that allow you to basically play your quest cards out early if you've met the objectives, gain whatever reward you've you've gained, and then at the end of the game you get to gain those points again. There's definitely some interesting uh, symbiosis. Mm -hmm. is, the, is that the okay? Yeah, symbiotic. You know, uh, yeah, with, like things that fire off, things that combo well with the powers on the new board and the player powers, plus this whole idea of forts. Every island, starting island out in the game has these forts that you can fight, but you gotta forego the basic part of the island. Which I didn't mention the overview, yeah. Yeah, and I. but the thing is I love going to the islands to get all the upgrades, I love upgrading my board a ton, but then there's this funny dichotomy of those upgrades can turn into cannons, and cannons are what you need to fight the forts. Mm -hmm. So you should probably hold off on fighting the forts. Until someone else does them first, and they're finite. Oh, man. That's good. You know what I mean? They gave you some kind of nice competing uh, priorities. Which one do you go for first? Yeah, and I think that's the thing with this is that you don't have to... You could play with the expansion and not do much of anything with the expansion, and you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like if you play with this, you have to go fighting forts, and you have to go cannons, and you have to, you know, you have to make your little player power thing fire off. I don't think you have to. And I think that's what's clever about this is I think it just gives you another road to go down if you want to go down it, but it's not necessary. I think you should play into your character's power strength a bit, right? Because it's just an easy avenue to more points. But I noticed that, you know, they, they have so many of the powers in here that they really just kind of play with the base game mechanisms. One of them, right. you know, that's very fun is you never have to roll the dice when you're raiding for the treasures you just always have a seven. That's... Base level seven is pretty sweet. That's great. There's another one who says when you roll the dice, if you pick the lowest one, you get to add five to that lowest roll. So if you roll like a one, six, six, you're like, well, they're all sixes for me. Or I could re-roll them and maybe I'll roll a four, five, six, and I actually get a nine by picking the lowest one. Yeah. So 
there's like a steady, very high number or a wildly fluctuant, but extra fun player power. I, I like that type of stuff. There's one that lets you put your upgrades anywhere on the board. You don't have to like slowly level them up as you're upgrading. You're mm-hmm. just like, yep, I'm going to take the top one. I'm good. <laughs> First upgrade, permanent three discount on all cards for the rest of the game. And yet all the powers are strong enough that even looking at that, when he was like, ooh, I'm very jealous of that. And then, you know, 10 minutes later, I was like, oh, I'm really jealous of yours. It's a good feeling if you're going to put player powers in a game, it making is. them kind of kind of wild. But uh, but still, I think at the end of the day, you have those feelings of like, oh, yours is better. But the scores can are still going to be around the same. Yeah. So do I think that this is a must-have expansion necessary? No. I don't think it fixes anything. I don't think there were any mistakes in the game that needed fixing in the base game. I think it does add more. So if you've played Pirates of Maracaibo many times and you're ready for that next level of, hey, I want to explore something different. I think that this allows for that. So you don't feel like you're doing almost everything in the base game. Um, it gives you just kind of those those few more roads to go down and try new combinations. It's kind of the weird thing when reviewing an expansion like this, an expansion for an already very competent, mm-hmm. very well-received game. Like what score do you, do you just give it the same score as the base game? Because I like the game just as much with this expansion in it as I did originally. It's not like it's one of those that elevates it even higher for me. No, no, I, I just, as someone who's played the basic game a bunch of times now, I like having a little bit more to it. So score-wise, it's kind of funny, right? Because I'm, I, I guess I would give this an 8 out of 10, and I've put some thought into that. I didn't just pull that number out of thin air right now. I don't think it's wildly essential, and partly because, as you said, the basic game has so much already going on in it. Yeah. But for people who have played a lot of this, you're you're going to want it. This is a very solid recommendation from me. I think that it's fun enough to pursue, to purchase, and I bet that you'll enjoy a lot of it. Um, it's not like giving it an 8 out of 10 is a, is a slight by any means. I, I think it's a very solid expansion, but I also would have been content to continue to play the basic game even without this. Okay, I'm going to give this an 8.5. Um, and... Part of that is just because I love the game so much. But I think also this doesn't bog down. Some expansions you feel like, oh my gosh, there's so many rules. There's so much extra. Or I feel like it just makes an already kind of big deck even thicker and bigger so that you're like, am I even going to see the new mechanisms? And I feel like it doesn't make that mistake. And so this is, it's clean. It's, it adds those player powers in. It adds a little bit of a mini game. It points you in a couple other directions. But I don't feel like that's this big slog of, oh, no, I have to learn all of this. I feel like I could teach someone the base game and include this and have them just be like, okay, this is a, this is a heavy game. Or I feel like I could leave it out and it would be just fine. Um, but I really, really enjoyed what it brought. And this is a game that I'm finding more and more that I'm very much enjoying. And so that's why it's an 8.5 for me. I think just maybe one small difference in our viewpoint is mm-hmm. this is an expansion I don't think I would want to teach for first-time players because the point of Pirates of Maracaibo for me is that it's more approachable than the original. Uh, and so teaching this to someone for the first time with this in it would kind of... It, it kind of undoes the point of why I like Pirates of Maracaibo so okay. much. It, this will be more complicated for a first-time player, and I would want to take it out. And I find that the the index on the cards is not easy enough, like super clear to just like go through the deck and pull the cards out. So once they're shuffled in there, it's going to take a bit of time to either undo that or just be like, ah, they're in there. What's this cannon you know, symbol? Oh, uh, ignore that card, right? So okay. maybe if it had been a little bit easier to sort out if I'm teaching it to brand new people, mm-hmm. right? Like that would be, that would have been appreciated. That'd be one slight thing for me. But oh, okay. um, I think that this is great for people who already like the game. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't recommend you for sure playing this with the in the base game. But I think for someone who's a gamer at my level, our level, you I could. think I would teach it. Yeah. I think it'd be fine. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, there you go. That is a seal of excellence for Pirates of Maracaibo Commanders. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Wendy Yee. And I'm Chris Yee. Yo ho, yo ho. Go be a pirate. Scurvy. Mmm, scurvy pancakes. Mm-hmm. You, your stomach rumbled after you said scurvy pancakes. You're concerned? I'm, I'm actually concerned about you. Oh, okay. Well, let's go eat lunch. Are you going to put lemon in your pancakes? Yes. Key lime pancakes. 
Hey everybody, thanks for watching another video from the Dice Tower. Hey, you want to learn more about us, communicate with us? We have a Facebook group, we have a Discord channel, lots of different ways to get involved with the Dice Tower. You can find that in our link tree link below. So just click that, it will take you and you can communicate with us on Facebook, join our Facebook groups. There's lots of cool things that you can find and become part of the Dice Tower. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Tom Bassett.